Okay, let's talk you through my workflow. I've chosen three images. Let's bring these up on the screen so you can get a closer look at them. These are the three images that I took throughout the day. Now, the top image that you can see here is a test shot um, when I was getting my camera set up, but the light was fantastic, and look at the drama in the sky. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that image there, but I'm only going to use the sky from it. Now, because I didn't move the tripod too much, which was really, really important, as I stressed during the filming, then I'm able to combine these three images quite easily. So I'm going to use this top image here for the sky to pull that drama out. I don't mind that the mountains are a bit dark there. I don't mind because that's befitting with a sky that's dark like this. This one here, I'm clearly going to use for the train because that's where the train that's really where I want the train to be. I might want the train. Let me rethink this. Let me rethink this one second. So I'm just looking now. In terms of rules of thirds, I'm probably going to want to use maybe that one there because I think compositionally wise that's much better bit of a pain with these cars and vehicles here but we'll overcome that let's have a look yeah that's too central for me if you imagine that's a central point I much prefer that there so I'm going to select that one instead and I'm going to deselect that one so now when I come out if I just look at the three I've now selected well I would do if I could get it right, there you go. Okay, these are the three I've selected. If I go on to film strip view, now I can see the three images. So once again, that one there, because I love this drama in the sky, that one there is perfect for the train. And this one here is a shot I took about 30 minutes after the train had passed when everybody had gone. And I've stressed that in the video. Okay, so, and the reason why I did that, of course, obviously because everybody's disappeared, so it's going to make my life a lot easier. Let's open these three up now in Photoshop, and I'll show you the easiest way to combine these images. Um, have you noticed I've gone straight from Bridge to Photoshop? I don't use Lightroom. I'm not a Lightroom fan. I'm not a Lightroom lover. Everything I'm doing now in ACR, when these when these images open up, you can replicate in Lightroom if you prefer to use Lightroom. I don't have a problem with that at all. Okay, so now ultimately the finished goal with these pictures will be black and white because I prefer the black and white especially for an image like this so it doesn't really matter too much um, about your white balance however let me just very quickly show you what I normally do I normally go from ash shot to auto ash shot to auto and I normally find anywhere in between if you're not quite sure especially on landscapes you can grab your white balance picker you can try and choose something either that's white gray or black in the image and then in theory that should change the white balance accordingly okay as we know it's easier said than done so leave that exactly as that is because I'm happy with that so let's go down through our workflow I'll try and keep this brief it's pretty um, matter of fact what we're going to end up doing with this now is the highlight slider we normally push down to the left hand side so we can claw as much detail down in the sky the shadow slider I pretty much always push it as far to the right as I possibly can to pull as much detail out in the shadows and now with my white slider I'm going to push my whites to the right just to give a bit more punch add a bit more punch to this image push my whites to the right hand side my blacks to the left hand side and basically that's exactly the same as adding contrast when you add contrast the contrast makes the whites white or the blacks blacker but of course you don't have anywhere near as much control over this slider here as you do the whites and the blacks independently so that's pretty much where I'm going to be with it now I don't want to claw too much detail out at this present moment in time so I'm pretty much just going to push that to around about 10 that's my clarity slider and my vibrance pretty much the same as well I push that to about 10 and that's all I want to do I don't really want to do anything else with this image now except because I'm only using this one for the sky I might grab my gradient filter here and if I pull my gradient filter down here just to claw more information more detail back in that sky so same rules apply my highlight slider I'm going to push to the left my shadow detail I want to push it to the right but this time I'm going to give it a little bit more clarity I want more detail in that sky again it's very important that you don't go too mad with this because you can very easily go too mad with it ok 
okay so everything I've worked on here let's sync that across the other three images so control and A on a PC or command and A on a Mac then I'm gonna press alt and S or you can go up into this little drop down menu here the little flyaway box and let's click on everything and let's click on OK there you go and that's a three pretty much done let's just double check that though bear in mind the first image this one here I'm only using this image for the sky this image here I'm only using this one for the train so let's just look at that train detail to make sure we're happy with that train detail again don't worry about the white balance I'm not really bothered about the white balance at the moment because the image will end up as black and white although it is still good practice to get that white balance right but that's not a million miles away from as shot there you go highlight slider to the left hand side let's look at the detail there all that detail is there uh, detail that is there in the train what I might or I could possibly do I could possibly put a little bit of lift here in okay, actual fact let's do that okay let's grab my local adjustment brush if you double click these here they'll reset and I'm going to add just a little bit of exposure a little bit of shadows and let's in actual fact there's one already there okay there's one I've already done earlier so click there as you can see when I hover over it or I suppose to when I hover over it it showed you there basically it's all around about that's fact if I remove it there you'll see the difference so from there to there I can highlight that again because it's a little bit too strong and let's bring that down let's not go overboard I just want to add a little bit of light a little bit of detail and a little bit of lift in the train and the smoke area okay the bottom one now then the bottom one here the bottom one is purely going to be used for the actual bottom of the image uh, that way if you look it'll save me so much time trying to remove all these people hence the reason we stayed behind so you'll be able to see the importance of doing that now um, it's taken a while by the way for my PC to render these pictures in because obviously I'm recording what I'm doing at this present moment in time as well so I'm happy with that everything looks perfectly fine there so let's control an A or command an A on the Mac let's open these images and let's bring these straight into Photoshop okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to combine these images together this is the easiest way it says cutting out skies and so on and so forth so let me show you how we're going to do that so I'm going to start off with this one this is the base okay this is the bottom then this one here is the train so let's just drag that across there make sure our move tool is selected and let's bring it on top of the other image and let's close that down let's drag the third one the third one will be our sky let's drag that across and let's match those up there okay now because obviously I shot over a space of probably two hours the whole shoot just to grab this one shot then the chances are because it was quite boggy my tripod sunk ever so slightly or the camera may have moved and so you can see now there is a massive difference now when I try and sync these pictures up so once again the easiest way of doing it is this let's just keep a, a track of this so let's keep this one let's just call that one the let's call that one the floor let's call this one the train and let's call this one the sky okay just good practice so I know where I'm at now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the control and shift button down select all three so now all three are highlighted I'm going to go up to edit and I'm going to come down to auto align images let's make sure both of these are ticked as well and make sure my auto is ticked and I'm going to click on OK and that should take about 30 seconds no more than that and that'll combine these three images if you've never you've never used that before it's very very good very very good very very powerful tool there you go so there's the three now joined together now obviously you can just see the top one at this present moment in time so we'll show you how we're now going to fix that but watch this let's switch off the sky let's switch off the train can you see now how all three of them are all lined up pretty much spot on so let's start off with the floor then which is there perfect I'm now going to add the train so if I add the train there select the train layer I'm now going to add a layer mask but now I'm going to invert my layer mask to hide it so now 
press B for my brush tool or this icon across here I'm going to make sure my opacity is at 100% and I'm going to make sure it's the opposite color so it's white so at the moment I'm seeing through the train layer is transparent so with my brush tool I'm now going to brush in the train so this is what we're going to do is I'm simply going to just paint up here somewhere roughly till we get that train in and then along here okay and I'm going to come up into this area here nothing any more complicated than that I'm at 100% so I don't need to keep going over and keep going over it again now I'm just going to have a bit of a tickle here and let's have a look and see what I can do obviously when I start coming down lower like there for instance okay then I'm going to start to reveal the people underneath so let's invert that color again and let's paint them out and let's have a quick look and see where I can go here because I might put a little bit of lift in there a little bit of light because the layer underneath is a little bit brighter and I don't mind doing that okay the easiest way of doing it you notice I'm not masking I'm not selecting anything everything's freehand just stick with lines I've got a line going across there so just stick with lines and it's perfectly fine and remember only you have seen the before and after so if you look at that there all I've done now is added that train okay now don't worry again about what's happening at the back here because the sky is going to be darker anyway and I'm going to bring this down it's going to be darker onto the mountains anyway so let's now add the third layer so I'm going to click on the sky once again I'm going to select that layer I'm going to add a layer mask and I'm going to invert it which is control and I on the keyboard I'm now going to invert it so now using my brush tool once again it's transparent at the moment remember so I can see through the sky layer right down onto the train now let's select my white to fill it in and all I'm now going to do with a big soft brush I'm going to take it pretty much right from here right across to there like so and let's go all the way up now and bring that sky detail in and that's how easy that is to do now remember the sky is darker and the sky layer was actually casting a shadow onto the mountains which is perfectly fine but there's no issues about these lines coming across here you see no issues at all I haven't had to cut anything out because I'm actually using the whole of that layer there where the sky is now once again if that's a bit too dark there perfectly fine invert okay press X to change that color to black and let's go um, let's go 30% up here with our brush okay once again your shortcuts on the keyboard is number three and that makes that 30% and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to just tickle it ever so slightly okay and then come down a little bit lower but if you do everything freehand or as much as you can freehand it just makes life so much easier and I like that it's a little bit off there so let's invert that color again nice bigger brush I don't mind the top of those mountains being dark there like that and there you go so that's the three of them combined and that's a pretty good job and that's only taken me seconds to do just slightly worried about these areas up here okay but we can fix that that's no problem at all so I like that that's pretty good now all I need to do now then I need to flatten these layers but I'm gonna do that with a shortcut control alt shift and E and if you look here what that'll actually do is that'll flatten the layers that'll pretty much take a screenshot of where I'm at and it adds it on top so in theory I've got a flattened layer on top but I still maintain the history underneath here and now all I'm going to do is control and T to free tr transform I'm going to hold down the shift button so that I can now open this up and keep everything in perspective everything so all I'm going to do is I want to keep that kind of small ish there how much that sky detail in there I don't want to lose too much of that frame I like that probably about there that's perfect hit OK and all I'm going to do now to tidy these areas up here I'm going to choose my polygon lasso tool click 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 and click there would have been there so I've now selected this area here because I've got more than one layer open the shortcut there is shift and backspace 
that's going to pop this box up and basically what I'm saying is delete this area but delete it using content aware I'm sure we've all used this before and that's gone same again let's bring that across there double click it join them together shift backspace and that's done a fantastic job let's look at the sky up here as well let's do the same thing let's see how well it does that brilliant job just brilliant there you go shift backspace fantastic there you go so that's the three taken care of one two three we now have one image and I really quite like that that's pretty cool okay that's good like that so now all I need to do is just tidy this up ever so slightly what I'm going to do I'm going to remove these cars from here so it's going to take me a little while I'm going to remove bits like this and bits like this in actual fact let's just do it now um, now there's millions of different ways of achieving the same result so if you do it in a slightly different way it doesn't really matter so um, I'm just going to drag that to there work on lines drag that to there okay your healing brush on its own would probably do a fantastic job um, oh. spot healing brush would probably do a fantastic job as well and the worst case scenario is you select your clone stamp again work on lines so I know from there working across that line there and remember only you have seen the before and after so again don't get too et up sometimes you can just spend so long doing stuff like this you're just wasting your time like that there for instance okay it's not perfect it's not a hundred percent perfect but if I was to zoom out you wouldn't tell the difference I know that's part of the building but I'm actually going to get rid of that as well so let's click on that there follow that line coming down here keep it nice and symmetrical there select it let's come across do 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 okay select this area here smaller brush come across paint that in there okay there you go once again when you zoom out you would never notice a difference um, just to keep my history I'm going to create a new layer so control alt shift and E and this time let's call this car removal okay and now I'm going to go in and remove the cars again I'm not going to get too anal about this lots and lots of different ways to do this let's just do that go along the lines there it's perfect okay control and D oh, I know if I leave it like that a lot of you guys will moan so <laughs> let's go for my clone stamp okay skip past any of these bits guys if you want to let's now carry this on down here and again you don't have to get this absolutely perfect because remember only you have seen the before and the after shots nobody else so if you start adding walls in and so on and so forth it really won't make a jot of difference because nobody but you will know what should have been there now this is going to get slightly trickier so you'll just have to bear with me on this but the easy way for me to deal with this is let's come to here roughly here okay I'm pretty much going to do this freehand all the way in actual fact a good tip here I'm going to draw a straight line so I'm going to select that area there hold down my shift button and go all the way up and then press my left mouse button and it'll join up go back and go back and go back okay my flow is at 44 percent so let's get my flow up to 100 percent and there you go once again if I toggle that off and on that's a massive difference instantly and again remember only you have seen the before and after so I'm going to choose that area there come down here so on area there So, do, 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 do. should have stuck with the other image. <laughs> Let's have a look. So, I'm looking at lines. I'm looking at roughly there. Sticking with that wall. On my clone, let's just remove this button here where it says aligned. Then, if I click on that there and release 
erase it it'll keep going back to it can you see that okay oh. now I can select that area there I've got a bit more to play with Remember, don't worry about this because a lot of this is going to get lost in translation anyway. You'll understand what I mean. By the time we've converted this to black and white, put some effects on there. You won't see any different. There you go, look. There you go. Quite like that. That's quite nice. Now, again, you can spend hours and hours and hours on that if you want to. This here, I might just click on that there. I might just put some more smoke in here gonna make life a bit easier if I just do that and cover up those cars there because they're gonna be a pain to deal with there you go and some there you go. no 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 and maybe in me I want to make sure just this area here so again with a clone stamp click on that there lines follow the line across up we go and pop that down there remember loads of different ways to achieve the same results if you do it a slightly different way it doesn't matter as long as you get there as long as we end up with the same result that's perfect so now once that's done i'm really happy with that um oh got a little character down here again don't go zooming 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 all the way in otherwise you're just completely wasting your time okay so let's go for my clone stamp click here right across here all the way up let's get rid of this character okay Let's come back up here and let's click my aligned again. Okay. Just trying to avoid repetition. That's all we're trying to do. Try and avoid repetition. There you go. Nice and simple. Remember? Stress, 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 stress. Only you. Would have seen them before and after so instantly i'm loving that if i very quickly go through that now then so we've got the floor we've got the train we've added the sky we've um cropped it properly and now we've removed all the cars and the few people and the vans and so on and so forth there that's a lovely lovely clean image you'd swear blind now that i was the only person that's there so before we now go on let's make sure the image is nice and clean the rest of it that's all perfect up in the sky perfect 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 okay and now the secret is not to over post process your work but let's go control alt shift and e because it's just the way i like to work and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to convert this image to black and white okay so once again the easy way of dealing with that in actual fact i'm going to come up here and i'm going to come on to uh, the black and white layer here just so that i can I've, i very rarely use this one if i'm honest with you but i'm going to because i want to get a bit more detail in that sky so let's have a play around and see what this does nice okay green grass blue sky this is what we're looking at don't overdo it but i want some detail down in that sky there you go love that that's really quite nice now what I'm now going to do is, this is a little bit different, I quite like doing this, Control, Alt, Shift and E again, so now the flattened layer on top is the same as the layer underneath, okay, which is another black and white layer. So if I click it, nothing happens. However, what I'm now going to do is, I'm going to go to Filter, I'm going to go to Nick and I'm going to go to Silver Effects Pro 2. It's a free download, it's made by, well, it's been bought out by Google, Google now own this, and when they bought it, they actually um, let it go as a free download which is fantastic so it's a great bit of kit however I only use it for one and that's this one here and it's called a high structure smooth that's the one I prefer now as you can see it kind of made a hash of it so it's quite dark don't worry about it click on OK So remember the layer underneath is a standard black and white layer and this now is the NYX version of the black and white. So a few things that we can actually do now then, we could add a layer mask and we could remove bits, we can reduce our opacity down to get it where you want to get it. 
and get it right for you. There's no right and wrong way of doing it. Just use your eyes. However, at this present moment in time, clearly, it's way over overboard. There's too much detail in there, and it just looks completely false. However, pretty cool. I quite like the way that it's converted that image to black and white. So, what I'm now going to do with this top layer, I'm going to hit the blending mode and bring it down to overlay. I'm going to click on overlay. What I've now actually done is I've now exaggerated how this effect looks compared to how it originally looked. Like there. Perfect. But, because obviously that looks so false, what I'm now going to do is simply hit my opacity layer, bring it all the way down. So now it's completely transparent. And now all I need to do is raise the opacity up slightly until I get the feel of the image that I want. And I don't mind, you can go a bit higher, it's up to you. There's no right and wrong way of doing this. Just don't go mad with it, don't go overboard. I just like a little tickle on there. So I'm going to use probably less than 30%, about 25%. I quite like that. So if I turn that off and on, you can really see the details being pulled out in that image, but it's still not overboard. Okay. What you can also do if you wish, you can add a layer mask, B for your brush tool, make sure um, your black is selected. So let's just change that to black. And in theory, I could now paint out, for instance, um, now let's make sure my uh, opacity there brush is at 100%. I could now remove some of that detail just from the train area if I wanted to, like that. Okay. I'm going to put some of it back in to here because I quite like the dark areas there. Actual fact. Let's leave it all in. Let's leave it all in. That's nice. There you go. I love that. That's really good. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of or two more things to it now then. Um, but again, you can stop here if you want to because this looks very, very good. However, Control Alt Shift and E, let's create a flattened layer again. Remember the flattened layer? It still keeps the history underneath, but it gives us pretty much a snapshot of where we're at right now with our image. And it's on a layer that's 100%. Remember the layer underneath is at 25%. So if I just duplicated that layer, it would duplicate the effect. Control and J, it would duplicate the effect. Hence the reason we go Control, Alt, Shift and E. It gives me a fresh layer at 100%. So from here now, then a couple of things I can do. I can actually choose now to dodge and burn. So if I now want to go in, so let's dodge for instance. Make sure we're around about 2%. And again, don't go too mad, but I just want to exaggerate that smoke ever so slightly. There, don't go too mad. Any detail we can pull out in the train. Let's have a look. Don't go too mad. Less is more, as they say. And now let's have a quick look at some of this detail in the sky. Okay, follow the lines. Get some detail brought out there. I really quite like that. It's quite nice. Let's do another Control Alt Shift and E, and this time let's do it for the burn tool. Um, so again, just in that smoke. Let's get some more detail in that smoke. Love that. Love that. Love these darker edges here. Follow that down. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. You can very quickly go overboard with this very quickly. And once I've done that, I really like that. Now I'm going to create a vignette. So again, I use actions. I've got a shortcut for a vignette. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to choose kind of that area there, for instance, like that. Okay. Nice square vignette. And the reason being, I want to kind of bring down the light in the sky and bring down the light on the floor here okay and then if I do that that's my vignette again I always create vignettes so that they're really overboard so now let's just reduce that opacity down until I get it where I want it to make it look false but I want to pull the viewers eyes away from the edge of the frame let's come back again click on my vignette tool which is that one there and there you go. Now one last one is let's sharpen it. Let me show you how I sharpen my landscape pictures. I want a flattened layer on there. Control Alt Shift and E once again, but this time to sharpen it, <laughs> this is so important because so many people just go overboard with this. But watch. The easiest way I find is go to filter and other. Okay, and then go on to high pass. I'm sure this isn't teaching you guys anything new 
let's go down to about 2 2.5 and I'm just looking at the detail that's chlorine out here which is quite nice maybe slightly less we'll have a look but I don't mind going slightly more because I know it's on a separate fresh 100% opacity layer so I know I can reduce that and I'm going to click on OK once I've done that let's go up to my blending mode come down to overlay which will hide all the grey okay and there we go so if I have a look at that before and after you can see now that's how I sharpen my landscape images again it's too much so let's reduce that opacity right down and just start to bring it in see too false just to bring it in so it looks quite nice again there's lots of different ways of achieving the same results but there you go and if I hit my full screen there let's get rid of the ruler there you go there you go I quite like that that's really quite nice that's a nice black and white it's a nice clean image all the vehicles have been removed all the people have been removed I've combined three images in one brought out the detail in the sky brought out the detail uh, on the train and so on and so forth uh, and the ground and everything I really like that's really really quite nice now once again it might be a little bit OTT so it's really really important when you do this that you can see how quickly the image can become really a, too strong the effects can be too wayward so just treat this with the contempt it deserves less is more but there you go I really love that thanks for listening guys